Praise to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And peace to everyone that's here in the name of Jesus. Peace to everyone that's watching us on the internet. And as always, it's always good to stand before you on this day, which is the Lord's Sabbath day. And to, today, the, the lesson is entitled Real Love. I mean, real love according to the Bible. Because we know it's a lot of counterfeit love that's out there that deals with emotion. But we're going to deal with some real love according to the Bible. And I know last night Elijah touched on a lesson. Fear and love go hand in hand. And it's funny how the Lord works because I pretty much had to rewrite my lesson because it was pretty much going hand in hand with his. So I actually had more than y'all getting off pretty easy today, but not really because I've added some more scriptures, so be ready. Because 122 verses, that's, that's out of the norm for me. Because I like to read. But we're going to deal with real love according to the Bible. And when you get out of this lesson, you're going to understand exactly what love is when it comes to God. Because love, in our eyesight, or in man's world, is emotion. You know, he's a good brother if he loaned me $20. I love him. You know, I can love this woman at the club one night, and then the next night I love the other one too. That's that worldly love. We're going to deal with godly love. And that boils down to pretty much what everything deals with when it comes to God, and that's just keeping the law, period. And we're going to start this in Matthew 22. Matthew 22. And we're going to pick it up at verse 34. 22 and 34. Okay, go ahead. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? So when, when the Pharisees, now Jesus dealt with the Sadducees. You know, you had all these different sects of religious leaders running around. And Jesus was a bad dude. He dealt with all of them. He didn't take no prisoners. He didn't have no mercy. He cut them straight to the bone with doctrine. And when he shut these religious leaders up, these other ones come along. They're going to try to get them too. And they sent a lawyer. Now, the only way to deal with a lawyer, you can't fast talk a lawyer. You got to deal with a lawyer out of his own book, and that's the law. And Jesus wrote the law, so they sent a lawyer to him to try to tempt him, asking him, Master, which is the great commandment and the law? And what did Jesus tell him? Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. So what did Jesus do when he dealt with a lawyer? He quoted the law. So the lawyer couldn't say nothing. But let's go read what Jesus quoted. Deuteronomy 6. Because he told him, look, the, first, the great commandment and the law is to do what? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Now the question is, people love the Lord, but how do you love them? It's got to be some stipulation how you love somebody. If you beat somebody, that ain't love. If you disobey them, that's not love either. But according to the greatest commandment, we have to love God. We're going to find out how we love God. But let's see what Jesus quoted. Deuteronomy 6, and we're going to start at verse 4. I'm going to throw that the one before that in there. That's just one of the extra verses, if you keep in count. Deuteronomy 6, and we're going to start at verse 4. Go ahead. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. So this is the same scripture that Jesus quoted for that lawyer. It was about the law. Loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And all your might is your strength. You're supposed to love God with every ounce of strength you have. I don't care how weak you are. If you, whatever weak, if you're still breathing, you got enough strength to love the Lord. Now let's go to Exodus 20, and let's see how you love the Lord. Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20. So when you're talking to a lawyer, you deal with the lawyer out of the law. Exodus 20, and let's pick it up at verse 1. 20 and 1, go ahead. 
And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So now we have to understand that who's speaking? First verse says God is speaking. So God is speaking all these words to the children of Israel, telling them, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Go ahead. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, for I the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So now we see what hate, God, hating God comes in at when you don't do what he say. When you put another God before the one true living God, he says that's hate. That is true hate. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, because I'm a jealous God. I do not want you to have anybody before me. Because if you do, you're telling me that you hate me. Because that's the flip side of love, is hate. Go ahead. And show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So that's where the love of God comes in, that you're keeping his commandments. So he shows mercy to thousands of them that love me, and what? Keep my commandments. What's the greatest commandment? Love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. And how do you love the Lord? You keep his commandments. Verse 7, go ahead. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it. That's how you please God, too. You keep, remember his Sabbath day, and you keep it holy. And how do you keep it holy? That's a whole nother lesson. We can do a whole lesson on the Sabbath day, but one thing he told you to do is remember it. And how do you remember it? You have a holy gathering and you come together. And that's what we're doing this day. Go ahead. Six days shall thou labor and do all thine work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is therein, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And this day is so important to God that he gave Israel one chance and let them off the hook. He said, I will forgive everything that you've done. Just keep my Sabbath day. I mean, they had done so much idolatry that the Lord was fed up with them. But he just gave them a shot. Look, just keep my Sabbath day, and I'll give you a pass. But, you know, Israel, they didn't even go for it. That's why we in this got kicked out the land, and we're sitting right here in America this day. Go to Deuteronomy 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 12. And he's going to tell you again. Deuteronomy 5 and verse 12. Okay, go ahead. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Just like we read in Exodus. He said, keep the Sabbath day and sanctify. Sanctify means separate it. Set it apart as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Go ahead. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thine work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. So not only is this Sabbath day good for the children of Israel, it's good for everybody, because it's all about resting. You're supposed to rest on this day and have a holy gathering. And we put so much emphasis on it because it is the commandment from God. There is no discipline in tomorrow's worship. You don't even have to go, especially if it's a good football game on. You don't have to show up. But the Lord commanded the people to keep this day. We don't take this day lightly. This day means something. Sunday don't mean nothing. The end result of sun worship is you're going to get burned up by some fire hotter than the sun if you continue down that path. Verse 15, go ahead. Did we finish that? Yeah. Verse 15, go ahead. Come on, man. 
Stay out the lesson. Just read it. Yes, sir. <laughs> And First. remember that thou was a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day, he told us again. Let's go to John 14. John chapter 14. So we see, according to these scriptures, how do we love the Lord your God, thy God with all your strength? You simply do what he says. It's so simple. It is not hard to do what God says. People just make it hard. It ain't that hard. I heard this one false prophet say that the Sabbath day was a sign between God and the children of Israel. They got Saturday. We got Sunday. Read to me what the sign, what Sunday is a sign between God and his people. You can't read it. But there's no discipline in son worship. John 14. Let's see what Jesus said. Okay, verse 15. Go ahead. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, this is Jesus talking, right? It's in red, so we got to go with it. It's got to be Jesus. And he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Just like he told that lawyer, love is what? Love God with your whole heart, your whole strength, and your whole mind, and your whole soul. That's love. So Jesus said, if you love me which a lot of people claim they do, but they stop there. I love Jesus, but how do you show Jesus you love him? You don't do nothing he say. Because we can read in the script what Jesus told him, why call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do nothing I say. So apparently if you don't keep the commandments, that means you don't love Jesus. I don't care what you do. If you don't keep the commandments, you are not loving Jesus. Skip down to verse 21. Go ahead. He that have my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that love me. And he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. See all this love, how all this love and keeping the commandments go hand in hand? Jesus said, if you have my commandments and keep them. Remember now, you, you just can't have them. You got to keep them, which means you have to do them. It says, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So this stuff is going hand in hand. If you love Jesus, you're going to keep his commandments. That means you're going to have his love, and not only that, but you're going to have the Father's love too. Skip down to verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So if a man love me, he's going to keep my words. And my father will love him, and we will come into him and make our abode with him. But what if you don't love him? Go ahead. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. Plain and, the and word simple. If you don't love Jesus, you ain't going to do nothing he say. Prime example, tomorrow, first day of the week, can't read nowhere in the Bible where it says to have a holy convocation on the first day of the week. I don't care how many writings of Paul they try to go to to try to circumvent keeping the Sabbath day. Like it's so hard. To do this. Is this hard? No. All you got to do is get up, get your Bible, come on down here, let's read the Bible, hang around a little bit for some question and answer, and when the Sabbath is over, it's over. You continue what you learned today and carry it over throughout the rest of the week till you come back again. What is so hard about it? Tomorrow is hard because you got so much stuff going on tomorrow, especially the end of football season. How many people really want to, I'm telling you, them, start, them preachers be cutting their service short so they can get home for the football game. So their mindset really ain't on this book. It's on something worldly. Keep reading. Do we finish that? Go ahead. And my father will love him, and we will come unto him. I'm sorry. And the word, and the word was which he hear is not mine, but the father which has sent me. So the words that you hear are not Jesus' words. They come from the Father. Jesus is just a spokesman. So if you deny Jesus, you deny the Father. And believe me, you don't want to do that because that is a no-no. you lucky Jesus came and died for you. Otherwise, the Father just wiped this whole world out. He wouldn't be done. I'm through with y'all. But you got a mediator between you, which is Jesus. Let's go to slip right over to John 15. 
Next chapter over John 15, and he's going to tell you again. Verse 10, go ahead. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, the ones that I gave you, then you shall abide in my love. And that's real love right there. How many times I'm going to love you to death with this lesson? You're going to see so much love and commandments. Love and commandments, love and commandments, that you're going to understand what real love is according to the scripture. So he says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So Jesus had to keep his commandments too from the Father. Let's go to um, 1 John 2. 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And we're going to let the Bible speak. Go ahead. My little children, these things write are unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So John writes, he says, look, my little children, these things I write unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. This is sinning in ignorance. This ain't willful sinning when you go out there and deliberately go against the commandments of God. This is ignorant sinning because we know ain't nobody in this world going to get out without sinning. You're going to mess up in some form or fashion. But the thing is, you get up and you brush yourself off. That's right. You repent. You ask the Lord for forgiveness, and you go on about your business. Don't stay down there wallowing in the mud. And don't get the mindset, well, I got away with this this time and nothing happened. Let me see what else I can get away with. Keep reading. And he is the propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Just like Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And here's the way that we know Jesus. We're keeping his commandments. This is the Jesus that we know. The one that said, if you love me, keep my commandments. The one that was in the grave for three days and three nights. This is the Jesus that we know because we're keeping his commandments. The one that said, thou shalt not steal. The one that said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And the one that said, thou shalt not have no other gods before me. These are the commandments that Jesus gave. So we know him. Verse 4, go ahead. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So if you say you know Jesus and you don't keep his commandments, the Bible's calling you a liar. So the one that says that Jesus said it's okay, that I know Jesus and I worship Jesus on the first day of the week, you a liar, according to the scripture. Because you're not keeping his commandments. He commanded you to keep the seventh day of the week. How many times did we read that? And we can read it numerous times throughout the Bible. The seventh day of the week, the seventh day of the week, not the first. That's that other Jesus that people are worshiping tomorrow. Keep reading. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know, we know that we are in him. He that saith he abided in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. So the new commandment is the same as the old commandment. Ain't nothing changed. You can't separate the Old Testament from the New Testament. It is all one book. There was no harsh God in the Old Testament. Now we got Jesus. Jesus is a little bit harsher in the New Testament than he is in the Old Testament, if you really read it. But if you don't have no understanding that, that was Jesus back in the wilderness with the children of Israel, then you separating Jesus and making him a different God than this God that you're reading about in the Old Testament. And they're one and the same. Because Jesus said, I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the first God you dealt with, and I'm going to be the last God you dealt with. But people don't understand. Let's go to Deuteronomy 7. So everywhere we see abiding in God's love or loving God with all your strength, it just boils down to obedience, doing exactly what he says. How do you show your parents you love them? You listen to them, 
They tell you not to do something, you don't do it. And you know if you disobey your parents, you got something coming. Same way with God. That's how you show your parents you hate them by not listening to what they say or not being obedient to your parents. And if you keep being disobedient, you're going to find yourself out on the street, homeless or locked up. And when you're dealing with God, and if you continue in your disobedience, you only got one thing coming. He's going to kill you, and he's going to wake you up and kill you again. So the choice is yours. Deuteronomy 7, and let's pick it up at verse 9. 7 and 9, go ahead. Know, therefore, that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. There it is again. Know, therefore, that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth the covenant and mercy with them that love him and do what? Keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. Go ahead. And repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. And how do you show God you hate him? Disobedience. You don't do nothing, he said. And the Lord said, look, he going to repay them that hate him to their face to destroy them, and he won't be slack in it. It ain't like, I'm going to get you, and you don't do nothing. The Lord said, I'm going to get you, and I ain't playing. I'm, you, you better believe it. I'm going to get you. Go ahead. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy 30. Flip right over to Deuteronomy chapter 30. So we see what real love is when you're dealing with God. And we're going to get to your neighbor in a second. But we're dealing with God first because we're coming up on this season to where people don't know what they're doing. They think they're following Jesus or worshiping God, but we can read in the book where they, you worship God in vain. The stuff you think that you're doing that's attributed to God, it's all for nothing. It has nothing to do with God. And he told you don't have no other gods before me. Deuteronomy 30, and we're going to start at verse 15. Go ahead. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. So he says, see, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil, and that I command thee this day to do what? Love the Lord thy God. And how do you do that? Keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. Go ahead. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou would not hear, but shall be drawn away, and worship other gods, and serve them, I'll denounce unto you this day, that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou possess it over Jordan, to go to possess it. So he told him, look, if you love me, you're going to do what I say, but I tell you this, if you decide not to do what I say and hate me, we read it in Deuteronomy 7, he said, look, I'm going to get you. I denounce this day that you will surely perish and that you shall not prolong your days upon the land whether thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. Go ahead. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So he said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Is heaven and earth still out there? Yes. So the record is still there. I set before you Blessing and life and death, blessing and curses. So it's still out there. Life is still out there. Death is still out there. You make the choice. You either love God or you're going to hate him. Choose one of them. Go ahead. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. So that thou mayest love the Lord thy God. And how do you do that? You obey his voice. You walk in his ways. And he told you how to obey him. Keep his commandments. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. That's it. It's so simple. But people just make it hard. Nehemiah chapter 1. Boy, this stuff is so easy. 
It's a lot easier than sun worship. Mm. Nehemiah chapter 1. And this is after Israel went into captivity under the Babylonian Empire. And they came back. And it seems like the prayer is still the same. Nehemiah chapter 1, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakiriah, and it came to pass the month of Chislu in the 20th year, as I was in Shashan, the palace, that Hananiah, one of my brethren, came, he and a certain man of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in a great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept, and mourned certain days, and fast, and prayed before God of heaven, and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy of them that love him and obey his commandments. Observe. Observe his commandments. Go ahead, read that sixth verse. Let thy ear now be attentive and thy eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. So how did they sin against God? They didn't keep his commandments. That's why they got kicked out of the land. So Nehemiah is doing some heavy praying. But he said in verse 5, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth the covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. So see how love and obedience go hand in hand? Especially when it comes to God. Let's go to um, Joshua 22. Back right up to Joshua 22. So when Jesus answered that lawyer's question, the first the greatest commandment in the law is to love God with your whole heart, your whole mind, and your whole soul, and all your strength. And this is how you do it. By obeying his voice, walking in his ways, which sums up keeping his commandments. How do you obey somebody's voice if you don't know what they're saying? Joshua 22, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Then Joshua called the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half the tribe of Manisha, and said unto them, Ye have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, and have obeyed my voice in all that I command you. Ye have not left your brother in these many days until this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God hath given rest to your brethren as he promised them. Therefore now return ye, and get you unto your tents and unto the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you of the other side of Jordan. But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you, to love the Lord your God, and to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave unto him, and to serve him with your, all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went into their tents. So Joshua's charging the people too. He's giving them a warning. He said, look, take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to do what? To love the, to love the Lord your God and to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. That's how you love God with all your heart and with all your soul, you keep his commandments. Psalm 18. Psalm 18. And this lesson is nothing but jabs and right crosses. That's it. And the knockout punches at the end. And we ain't sticking and moving or nothing. We just jabbing, jabbing, steady blows to the head. If you can't read this, I'm sorry, you got a problem. Psalm 18, we're going to read one verse. Verse 1, go ahead. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. 
I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. You're supposed to love the Lord. How do you love the Lord? You keep his commandments. And he said it's going to prolong your days. You're going to have length of life. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. That one verse speaks for itself. Let's go back to Matthew 22. And let's deal with your brother. The brother that's in your family and the brother that's your neighbor. And let's see what Jesus told this lawyer again. We're going to pick it up right at the beginning. Matthew 22. And pick it back up again at verse 34. When the, when the Pharisees had heard that they had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. So we just covered the first and great commandment about loving God, and we know how to love God. All the scriptures we just read, how do you love God? You keep his commandments. You obey his voice, walk in his ways, his statutes. That is real love of God. Go ahead. And the second is like unto thou shalt love thy neighbors as thyself. And the second greatest commandment in the law is what? Love your neighbor as yourself. Or to paraphrase it, do unto others as you had them do unto you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Whatever you want, whatever you not want to be done to your neighbor, you won't do it to yourself. You treat your neighbor like you want, you, like you want to be treated. You don't steal. If you don't want nobody to steal from you, don't steal from your neighbor. You don't want nobody to beat you up, don't beat your neighbor up. It even goes within the household. You don't want to get beat up, don't beat up your wife. Don't fight amongst your brothers. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go ahead. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So on these two commandments, they didn't take, took this script right here and have thrown out all ten and said, we just need to do this. Just love God and love your neighbor. But how do you do that? You keep the commandments. And if you love your neighbor, you ain't going to steal from them. You ain't going to kill them. You ain't going to lie on them. And we're going to read that. I'm jumping the gun a little bit. I'm getting ahead of myself. So Jesus quoted out of the law to this lawyer. Because that's how he dealt with that lawyer. He quoted the law. So let's go read what Jesus quoted to this lawyer. Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. He dealt with a lawyer on his own terms, a lawyer, out of the law. You ain't going to talk baseball with a lawyer. You're going to talk law. Just like my father, he bought me this book. Well, he gave it to me. He had it. It's about how to cheat in cards. Now, he didn't give it to me just to cheat on people. He gave it to me to keep the cheat off of me, to spot what somebody else is doing, because it's easy. It's not how to cheat. It's like card tricks. He just pulls the cover off the people that's doing the card tricks. So I know the con already, because I done read the book. So how do you deal with a con man? Through confidence. <laughs> Leviticus 19 and verse 18. Read that verse. Go ahead. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So don't hold no grudge against your brother. You're supposed to love him as yourself. If you got anything against your brother, you better settle it right now because you can't be up here on the Sabbath day thinking you're serving God and you got a problem with somebody out there. You cannot love God that you don't see and hate your brother that you see every day. And that's in the book. Now let's go to um, Romans 13. So the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. And how do you love your neighbor as yourself? We're going to read it. We're going to let the Bible speak. Romans 13, we're going to read one verse. And Paul going to tell you the same thing. Romans 13, and pick it up at verse 8. Okay, go ahead. Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. Oh, man, anything but to love one another. And how do you love one another? Go ahead. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So he that loves your neighbor as yourself, you have fulfilled the law. 
You have fulfilled the law if you're loving your neighbor. And how do you love your neighbor as yourself? You keep the law. Let's go to John 15. Back to John 15. And Jesus is going to tell you about some love too. He told you in the beginning of this chapter about loving God, but now he's going to tell you how to love your fellow man. And it's the same thing. John 15, and pick it up at verse 12. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. So Jesus is giving them a commandment too. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Skip down to verse 17. These things I command you that you love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So you ever notice how much hell you catch because you following the one true living God? While the world is doing something else, you're doing what the thus saith the Lord. And you are hated for it. People you never thought would have any evilness against you. When it comes to serving God, the evilness comes out. I don't care who it is. Your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, even your friends. They really hate you. They don't know they hate you, but they really hate you. And it all boils down to what? Loving God and keeping his commandments. You doing it, the world is not, so you're going to be hated. The world loves its own because everybody's on the same road. You can hop from Sunday church. You can be top-of-the-line Catholic Christian if you decide to leave the Catholic church and go to some other Sunday denomination, they ain't going to hate you because you're still going to be doing Christmas and Easter. They may be a little upset because, you know, you don't go to the, to the church no more, but you still come around on Christmas and Easter too and all those other foolish folly days that are associated with sun worship. But stop going to church on Sunday. Start keeping the Sabbath days. Start keeping the feast days. Watch how much hate you get from your own family. And we can all attest to it. Everybody here got a testimony about how you're getting treated within your family. And your friends and on the job, too. Keep reading. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than, the, than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that it is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. So Jesus said it might come to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. People don't know why they're doing this to you. But you know because you're serving Jesus. The one true Jesus. The true and living God. Let's go to uh, this saying in the lesson. I'm going to throw this one in there. 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Because the Bible says you got to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to love one another. But let's see how you do that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And pick it up at verse 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. So we know how to walk and please God, right? You keep his law. And that's what Paul is teaching these Thessalonians. Go ahead, verse 2. For ye know that the commandments we give you by the Lord Jesus 
For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should obtain for fornication. So it says, for ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. So the same thing Paul is teaching these Thessalonians, it came from Jesus. Nothing changed. It's all about the commandments. Skip down to verse 6. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God had not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto holiness. He, therefore, that despises, despises not man, but God, who have also given unto us his Holy Spirit. So it says, he, therefore, that despises it, he don't despise man, he despises God. So if you're doing your brother wrong, if you ain't keeping the law according to love your neighbor as yourself, then not only are you despising this guy, but you're despising God because God gave you a commandment on what to do, how to treat your neighbor. And if you're breaking the commandment on how to treat your fellow man, then you're breaking God's commandments and you are offending him. Keep reading. But also touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. But as for touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for you yourselves are taught of God to do what? Love one another. That is brotherly love. You're supposed to treat your neighbor as if he was your own brother. That's what brotherly love is. Treat your own neighbor as if he was your own brother. Now, if you don't, if you treat your brother crazy, you ain't got no problem treating somebody in the street crazy. So let's look at it. Genesis chapter 4. It's just a couple of examples that I threw in because this lesson is too short, man. So we're going to stretch it out a little bit. Genesis chapter 4. And let's look at some brotherly love. Genesis chapter 4, verse 13. And pick it up at verse 1. And Adam knew his... And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was the keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat of thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So now here are the first two brothers that's on this earth, Cain and Abel. This is some brotherly love right here, right? Let's see how much brotherly love is going on. They had an offering. Cain's offering was, the Lord didn't like Cain's offering, but he respected Abel's offering. Go ahead. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be their desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So the offerings that they made to God, Cain was mad because Abel's offering got accepted. But God told him, he said, look, if you do good, it'll be accepted. What you, why are you mad at him? I didn't accept it because you didn't do good. But he didn't listen. Go ahead. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried out from the ground. So now if, this is a, if he was dealing with some true brotherly love, he wouldn't have killed his brother. And if murder was good, he wouldn't have said I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? So we see the law was still in effect way back when. Thou shalt not kill. Show some brotherly love. You don't kill your brother. That's crazy. Keep reading. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thy be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Okay, that's good on that. So Cain killed his brother. And now you got to get the repercussions for it. You just can't kill nobody and get away with it. 
I mean, you can ask OJ that. <laughs> Judges 9. Let's go to Judges 9. Let's see some brotherly love here. So he killed his brother because he had no respect for him. Go to Judges 9. And this guy here was just totally out of pocket. Judges chapter 9, and pick it up at verse 1. Judges 9 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And Abimelech, the son of Jeroboam, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and communed with him and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it is better for you, either that all the sons of Jeroboam, which are three score and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. Now to give you some background on this, Abimelech was the only son of Jerubbabel that he had from somebody outside of the, outside of the um, actually she was a, um, well let's, let's read it, I ain't gonna even prepare, but let's read it. Go, go back up to Judges 8. And pick it up at verse 34. Go ahead. And the children of Israel remembered not the Lord their God, who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies on their side, neither showed their kindness to the house of Jerubbabel, namely Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had showed unto Israel. Okay, now go ahead and start in the verse chapter 1. Go ahead. 9 and 1. Go ahead. And Abimelech the son of Jeroboam went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and communed with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it is better for you, either that all the sons of Jeroboam, which are threescore and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. And his mother's brethren sprang of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for he said, He is our brother. So now Abimelech was the son of Jerubbabel by a concubine, okay, because Jerubbabel had 70 children, and he had one by this lone concubine. And now when he died, they needed somebody to replace him. So Abimelech, trying to be slick, Went to his own people and said, okay, is it better for 70 people to reign over you or just one? Because remember, I'm from y'all. They from somewhere else. Keep reading. And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver of the house of Biathereth, wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. And he went into the father's house at Ophrin and showed his brother and the sons of Jerubbabel being three score and ten persons. Upon one stone, notwithstanding yet, Jonathan Jotham. Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbabel, was left, for he had him, for he hid himself. So they, he got him some money, and he went and killed sixty-nine of his brothers. Now these are all brothers; they his brothers too. And he went and killed sixty-nine of them, and only one of them escaped, and that was Jotham. Go ahead. And all the men of Shechem gathered together, and all the house of Milo went and made Abimelech king in the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. So if all the heirs are gone and you only one left, I'm king. But how did he do that? He killed all his brothers to get the kingship. So much for brotherly love. He didn't have no kind of love for his brothers. But just like Cain got repaid for his actions, the Lord is going to repay this guy. Skip right down to chapter, verse 23. Because he thought he was good. Go ahead. Then God, then God sent an evil spirit. Verse 22, I'm sorry, 22. When Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel. So three years later, he thought he was good. He was sitting pretty for three years. And all of a sudden, 
It's time for payback now. The Lord getting ready to collect. And what did he do? Verse 23, go ahead. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dwelt treacherously with Abimelech. So the same people that elected him king, they was out to get him, and he was out to get them. Three years later, I mean, people think they do stuff, they think they're getting away. You're not getting away, you're just getting by. Payment is at the end of the line. You're going to get yours, because the book said, God said, look, I will recompense. Vengeance is mine. You don't worry about it. I'll take care of them. Go ahead. That the cruelty done to the three score and ten sons of Jerubbabel might come, and their blood be laid upon Abimelech their brother, which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brethren. So now this dude, they ended up fighting amongst each other, and he ended up getting his head split. Now let's go to 1 Samuel. Now this is brotherly love amongst each other, so-called brotherly love. They're killing each other. But let's look at your neighbor, who you're supposed to treat as your brother as well. So if you don't have no love and, and, and kindness towards your brother, the person that's out on the street, you ain't going to care for them either. So let's look at David, 1 Samuel chapter 11. And pick it up at verse 1. 1 Samuel 11 and 1. Then Nahash the um, Amorite came up and encamped against Jab Jabesagadad, and all the men of Jabez said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us, Wait and we will. That it. That's not it. Hold on. I think it was 2 Samuel. Yeah, 2 Samuel 11. Y'all should have known that. You know I was talking about David and Bathsheba. How come y'all didn't say nothing? 2 Samuel 11. Okay, go ahead. And it came to pass after the year was expired and at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besaged Rebeth. Re Re but David tarried still at Jerusalem, and it came to pass at an evening, evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof of the saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not that Bathsheba, the daughter of El Elam, the wife of Uretha, the Hittite? And so David now David... He got up in the middle of the night, he walking around, he see a woman bathing, he was already informed, look, this is somebody's wife, dude. That's like hands off. Don't even think about it. But what happened? Verse 4, go ahead. And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, and she was purified from the, her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. So he sent his messengers, okay? And they wouldn't got her. Who wouldn't want to be with the king, you know? Just to see him. But, you know, David had something else on his mind because he didn't already seen her naked. So he was already filled with lustfulness. But he's the king, right? I can do what I want to do. I'm the king. So he sent his boys. They got her. He slept with her. And she popped up pregnant. Go ahead. And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uretha the Hittite. And Joab sent Uretha to David. And when Uretha was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war was prospered. And David said unto Uretha, Go down to thine house, and wash thy feet. And Uretha departed out of thy king's house, and they followed him a mess of meat. So he king. called, David called Uriah the Hittite from out of the battlefield, asked him how everything was going, you know, how's the war, what's happening, is everything cool? He was like, yeah, it's cool. Well, go ahead and wash your feet and go see your wife. And right behind him, he got a whole platter following him back to his house to be with his wife because David got to fix this. So it's easy to fix it if your husband lay with you you can pass the baby off as his. 
So David, he he trying to cover up something. <laughs> verse eight, go ahead. Verse, yeah, verse eight, go ahead. And David said unto Uriah, Go down to thine house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of thy king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. So he didn't go to his house to see his wife. He stayed right at the king's door. Because this was an honorable man. Go ahead. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down into his house, David said unto Uriah, Comest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down into thine house? So now David is mad now. He's like, man, dude, <laughs> you done came from a long journey. It's like being out at sea for six months. The first thing you want to do when you get back, go see your wife. Take care of six months of build up and handle your business. But this dude was out in the, out in the field all this time, so quite naturally, you're supposed to go see your wife. But he didn't. Verse, not, verse 10, go ahead. I mean, verse 11. And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open field. Shall I then go into my house to eat and to drink and to lay with my wife as thou love, livest? And as thou so livest, I will not do this thing. So this was an honorable man. Verse 12, go ahead. And David said unto Uriah, Tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and tomorrow. So now David, he got another plan now. He said, okay, stay here with me today, and tomorrow you can get on out of here. Verse 13, go ahead. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he did make him, made him drunk. And at eve he went out to lie on his bed with his servants of his lord. But not went down, but not went not down to his house. So David got the man drunk. He thought that would work. I mean, it'd work with any one of us, wouldn't it? You get drunk, you get frisky. But David, Uriah was like, no, nah, he slept right there with the servants. So now he done tried everything, so now he ain't got no alternative but to just off the man. Go ahead, verse 14. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city, he was assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that the valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab. Out there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. So now he didn't kill the man. By his hand, he killed him. He wrote the man a letter, and he knew this man was so honorable, he wouldn't even open that letter up and read it. Because if he had it read, he'd have found out that, hey, I'm about to get killed. But he was so honorable, he delivered the letter like he was supposed to, and Joab did his job. Put him out in the front line of the hottest battle, draw back, and let him get killed. So now David done killed this man. First he done slept with his wife. Now he done killed the man to make everything as cool. So much for brotherly love towards your neighbor. Let's go right into 2 Samuel 12, because the Lord weighed in on it, because you can't get away with this. Flip right over to 2 Samuel 12 and pick it up at verse 7. Go ahead. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anoint thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house, and thy master wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? So he said, Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord? And what is the commandment of the Lord concerning your neighbor? Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. He despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight. Go ahead. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thine wife. 
Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will rise up evil against thee out of thy, thy own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of his son, of this son. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. So you see the consequence of what David did? Now his whole house is in turmoil. We don't have time to read everything that happened to him, but you can read it on your own. His whole household was messed up. His son ran him out of town. His son slept with his wife. One son killed the other son because he raped his sister. I mean, if that ain't turmoil within your household, I don't know what is. And David walking around, what happened? Well, you know what happened. Keep reading. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. So you see how serious this was? David was on the chopping block for this. You can't give him a pass because and stone somebody else. He was on a chopping block for this. Go ahead. How be it, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the children also that is born unto thee, sure, so shall surely die. And Nathan departed. That's good on that. The child shall surely die. So the baby that he had with Bathsheba, the Lord killed it. He killed that baby and messed up his whole household. His whole household suffered for what he did. He had no brotherly love toward his neighbor. He didn't love Uriah as he loved himself. He wouldn't want Uriah sleeping with his wife, so why did you sleep with his wife? Let's get back to the lesson. Now go to um, 2 John 2. 2 John 2. And I might throw a few more in there too. It's still early. 2 John chapter 2. So we see what examples of brotherly love is it. Brotherly love is not killing your brother. And brotherly love is definitely not sleeping with your neighbor's wife. And in the process, killing him too. That is not brotherly love. That's a despisement of the commandments of God. That is not real love according to the Bible. That's real hate. Go to um, 2 John chapter 2. No, we read that already, didn't we? Did we read that? Go ahead. 2 John 2, and pick it up at verse 1. 2 John chapter 2. Right, 2 John chapter 2, start at verse 1. Go ahead. I mean, 2 John, verse 1. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from the God, the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye shall walk in it. So John is saying the same thing. It's nothing new. It's the same commandment you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. As this is the love, and this is love right here, that we walk after his commandments. That's real love, walking after the commandments of God. Go to um, 1 Timothy. Chapter 1. And this is something that the world is totally messed up. 1 Timothy chapter 1. And pick it up at verse 5. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Now, now the end of the commandment, now they didn't took this verse. Say, this is the end of the commandments. All we need is charity, good faith, and a good conscience. We don't, now the end, it's not the end of the commandments, it's the conclusion of it. 
Just like what Jesus said in Matthew 22. He just summed them up. So what is the conclusion of the commandment? It's charity out of a good heart and out of a good conscience and a faith unfeigned. And what is charity? Let's read it. I didn't print all this up because I probably would have ran out of ink. But it's just, we're going to, it's real quick. Webster's Dictionary, the definition of charity is what? Charity, definition of one is love. Plain and simple. So we see charity is the same as love. And what is love according to the Bible? Keeping the law. So now we can read this verse again with some understanding. Now the conclusion of the commandment is love out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. What is faith? Your belief. It's not wavering. It's going to be strong. And that's what love is. Because if you're walking in real love, you're keeping the commandments. Charity, charitable acts, it's a good act towards your fellow man. What is a good act towards your fellow man? You ain't going to kill him. You ain't going to sleep with his wife. You ain't going to lie on him. You ain't going to steal from him. Those are charitable acts towards your man, fellow man. And that's real love towards your neighbor. It's not how much money you give in the sight of other men to make yourself look good. That ain't nothing. That don't mean nothing with God. You can leave your whole fortune to charity, as this one famous talk show lady going to do. Think she going to score some points with God? Please. I don't care how much money you give to your favorite charity. If you ain't keeping the law, give me that money. <laughs> give it to me. So charity is love. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. So charity is not how much money you give to your foundation. That ain't going to score no, it'll score some points with the world, because the world will love you for that. Oh, he gives money to charity. He's a good brother. Please. 1 Corinthians 13, pick it up at verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunted not itself, it is not puffed up. Do not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinking of no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but wherever there be prophecies, there shall fail. Wherever there go tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. But now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know even as, even also I am, and now by the faith, hope, Charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. So this is the charity chapter, which is none other than love. Because it says what? Charity suffers long, it's kind, it don't envy, it vaulteth not itself, it's not puffed up, it doesn't behave itself unseemingly, it doesn't rejoice in iniquity. Love, real love, which is keeping the law, you can't rejoice in iniquity. Because that's despising the commandments of God. So charity is real love. Let's go to um, Galatians, 1 Peter 4. I mean, Colossians 3. And we almost done. We're about to wrap it up. Colossians 3. So we see charity and love go hand in hand. But not in today's world. But we're dealing with the book. Flip right over to Colossians 3, and we're going to read a couple of verses here. Colossians 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Go ahead. 
Put on, therefore, at the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things put on charity, which is bond of perfectness. Perfect. Perfectness. Per perfectness. And above all things put on charity, which is what? The bond of perfectness. That is real love right there. Because it says, look, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against you, against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. What did Christ tell you? To love one another. If you love one another, then you're going to abide in my love, and you're going to abide in the Father's love as well. That is loving your neighbor as yourself. You got a problem with somebody? Settle it. Let's be done with it. Ain't no sense in getting mad, sitting up here mad at each other. The Bible says, don't let the sun set on your anger. You settle it and be done with it. Let's go to um, 1 Peter 4. So charity is the bond of perfectness. In other words, love. That is real love right there. 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to pick it up at verse 7. 1 Peter 4 and verse 7. Okay, go ahead. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. So you're supposed to have fervent charity. That means some, what's fervent? That's you're supposed to be loving it. I mean, just it's burning up inside you. Charity amongst who? Amongst yourselves. For charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Go ahead. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Use hospitality. Be hospitable towards each other. That is loving one another, being hospitable. You know, open the door for somebody. Give them your last piece of chicken if they need it. Don't ask me for it, though. <laughs> but go ahead. As every man had received a gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the mainful grace of God. Okay, let's go to Galatians. And all this stuff is dealing with charity, and you see what char charity is. It's the same thing as love, and it's keeping the law, bottom line. Just like we read in Romans 13, verse 8, Oh, no man nothing but love, for love is fulfilling of the law. Galatians 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Galatians 5 and 14, go ahead. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. So look at Paul said, For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And this is the treatment of your fellow man. For all the laws fulfilled. Now we're going to read what most of that stuff is. We're going to break it down, each one of them. But all the law concerning your neighbor is fulfilled and love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, Take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Verse 16, go ahead. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So walk in the spirit. And what is walking in the spirit? Walking in his word. Don't be caught up on, well, this is a capital S. It must be the Holy Spirit. No, it means the word. Because if you walk in his word, you're going to, you, go ahead, though. <laughs> For the flesh lusteth after against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other, so that ye cannot do the thing that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. So if you are led by the spirit, which is none other than the word of God, and you are not under the law. Why? Because you're keeping it. You're keeping the law. How can you be under a law if you're keeping it? They can't give you a ticket for running the red light if you stopped at the red light. So if you led by God's word, you are keeping his law, so you're not under the law. We finished that? Yeah, let's go right into Galatians 6. 
We're going to read a couple of verses there. Relation, Galatians 6, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such in one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So bear ye one another's burdens, and so what? Fulfill the law of Christ. Now, what is the law of Christ? It's love, right? We read it. You love God with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul, and you love one another or love your neighbor as yourself. That's fulfilling the law of Christ when it comes to your neighbor. If a man be overtaken in a fault, if you see, you can see it on a brother's face or a sister's face, there's something going wrong with him, you know. You can see it on their face. If they want to discuss it with you, that's fine. But if they, if they choose to discuss it, you know, we all we know what's going on. Talk to one another. Restore such one to a spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Let's go to um, Psalm 119. Matthew 19, I'm sorry. What about Romans 12? Romans 12. Yeah, let's go to Romans 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 14. Romans 12 and verse 14. Okay, go ahead. Bless them which persecute you. Bless, Bless them which persecute you. Go ahead. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do not rejoice and weep with them that weep. So we got to understand that this love is, it's, this is some real love now. You got to deal with people who really hate you. And you have to be of the mindset to where you can't retaliate to something that they say to you. You got to be meek and humble. But then again, you can't be no fool either. Keep reading. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but consider to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own concerns. Con conceits. conceits, I'm sorry. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. So don't repay somebody do you wrong. You can't turn around and do them wrong either. Why? Because you are not fulfilling the law of Christ when you do that. You let the Lord deal with them. Because any time somebody is messing with one of the Lord's servants, believe me, he will take care of them. He will get them. You just don't take matters into your own hands. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. Go ahead. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. If it be possible, if it be possible, you live peaceably with all men. Keep reading. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay, let's go to uh, Matthew 19. Matthew 19. So all this good love we've been reading about, it all boils down to keeping the law. You love God, you keep the commandments. You love your fellow man, keep the commandments. And those are good things to do. Because the Bible says the law is good and the commandment good and holy and just and good too. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Matthew 19, and pick it up at verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? So this young man asked Jesus, What good thing must I do? Simple question. He's going to give him a simple answer. Go ahead. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So he told him, look, he gave him a simple answer to a simple question. I want eternal life. What good thing must I do? The greatest good thing you can do is keep the commandments. Keep the commandments, and thou wilt enter into life. Go ahead. He said unto him, which? Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, 
honor thy father and thy mother, and thy shall love thy neighbor as thyself. Oh, so we know what loving your neighbor as yourself is, right? We see you don't commit adultery, you don't murder, you don't steal, you don't lie on them. Even within your household, you honor your parents. But to sum it up, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Just like he told that lawyer in Matthew chapter 22, that's the second greatest commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. And what does that second greatest commandment consist of? How to deal with your fellow man. Nothing has changed. He just summarized it into one sentence. He took five commandments and summed them up into one. But they're still there. Let's go to Psalm 119. Psalm chapter 119. And we got one more place after this, maybe. Psalm 119, and we're going to read one verse. Psalm 119. And read verse 165. Okay. Great peace have they which love the law, and nothing shall offend them. So great peace have us which love the law, and ain't nothing you can say that's going to get me. Because I'm, I can read everything that I'm doing. I got a lot of peace. You can say anything you want. I don't care who you are, mother, father, sister, brother. I don't care what you say. You can't offend me because I can read what I'm doing. Why are you mad at me? Because I don't do Christmas? Please. You can't read Christmas in the book. So you can't offend me. Don't be mad at me because I don't show up at the, the extravagant birthday party that you had or for your little Thanksgiving meal. Why are you mad at me? You cannot offend me because I have Great peace. Why? Because I love the law. So you get nothing you can say that's going to tick me off. Now let's finish it up in Romans 13. Romans chapter 13. And we're going to pick it up again at the beginning of verse 8. Romans 13 and verse 8. Okay, go ahead. Oh, no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So, oh, no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Go ahead. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is fulfilled, fulfilling of the law. So therefore love is the fulfilling of the law, and that's real love according to the Bible. And I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. Amen.